Welcome to the second week of the MOOC on Managing Responsibly. And this week we are going to talk about ecological uh, sustainability. And ecological sustainability is about the impact that our economic activities have on the natural environment. And when we think about ecological impact, it's uh, very uh, easy to immediately think about technology as being the cause of that impact and also uh, the solution to that impact because if we can improve our technology then we can also sort of uh, diminish the ecological impact. Um, and I'm here today to uh, make a point about technology because very often we think about technological development as something that happens to us uh, so it's simply a trend that we have to succumb to. Uh, and the point I want to make is that even though technology is something that's developed and we still have, we have to live with it, uh, we can also make choices within that development. And to make that point, I'm here today in the Museum of Science and Industry uh, in Manchester. Uh, and this museum is devoted to the history of technology and the role that Manchester played in that history. So you will find, for instance, the first uh, stored program computer that was developed by researchers of the University of Manchester. And today we are here in the Power Hall, which uh, has a collection of technologies that have been used over time to, uh, to generate the power for economic processes. And of course, uh, power is quite important and you will probably know that uh, in the Industrial Revolution, uh, sort of generating power through steam engines was a very uh, uh, big improvement over the power that was used up till then, which was human power and animal power, and to some extent water power. Um, and the steam engine was a very big improvement in the sense that it could generate much more power. Uh, and the steam engine also had a lot of consequences because it's quite expensive equipment, at least at that time it was very expensive equipment. It meant that uh, you had to organize activities around the engine. So the reason why we have factories, or that factories started to develop in the 19th uh, century, um, is because people started organizing production around the steam engines to make the most out of that. Um, another consequence of using steam engines is that they have a negative impact on the environment. Um, they basically produce smoke and the smoke uh, went up into the air but very quickly came down again uh, and it caused damage to both buildings uh, but also for instance it, it soiled the laundry that people were hanging outside to dry. Um, and what is interesting, and that's really the point why I'm telling this story, is that um, uh, as a consequence of this, this impact, uh, people started to take action. So in some countries like Prussia, uh, the government uh, tried to uh, get uh, firm owners to improve uh, the rate of combustion and in that uh, way uh, improve uh, the ecological uh, performance of these uh, these engines and in other cities uh, communities together with factory owners also developed a collaborative approach uh, to improve the performance of this technology. So this is a first example where we have a technological development but where people also actively try to shape that development in such a way that it actually has uh, uh, less ecological impact. A second example is uh, something that I didn't really know about before I came into this uh, museum uh, and it's the example of hydraulical power. Uh, and hydraulical power uh, was uh, a system of pipelines through the city of Manchester and it was developed also in a couple of other cities in the UK. Uh, and basically uh, hydraulical power means that you use a steam engine uh, to put water under pressure and then the pressured water can be used as a source of power uh, and uh, through that power you can then operate uh, presses, uh, cranes and other equipment. And this is for me interesting because in a way this is an alternative uh, to the electricity network 
because the electricity network basically means that we generate power in one place and then we distribute it to other sources. And the hydraulic power network is an alternative to that. And you might expect that that quickly dissolved, you know, around maybe 1900 or something like that. But actually this network was active until 1972 in Manchester. And this is interesting because it shows that we have alternatives. Yeah? So very often technologies are not the only possibility to do a certain thing. We have alternative technological solutions. So again, this shows that there is choice. And because there is choice, there is also a reason to take seriously uh, the idea that we have to manage responsibly.